Yes. All right. Once again, good evening, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ from around the world, from around India. Thank you for making this time, for coming, for praying before this meeting, like you all pray every day. And we're going to start with a short prayer as we ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill our hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, we thank and praise you for all that you are doing in our lives in this world. Holy Spirit, you have the fruit of peace. We ask you that during this time, during this talk, you fill us, fill our minds, our hearts with that peace and help us to understand what is your peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Son of Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm really excited to be with you all once again this month. It's raining here in Mumbai. I hope the weather is good there too. Wherever you all are. Yes, brother. All over rain. Praise God. All over rain. So everyone's at home. We have yes. a good number. Also. Okay. All right. So my topic is blessed are the peacemakers. And uh, I did a little more digging into it. And I got a beautiful story from the Bible, from the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 25. Do you all know the story of David and Abigail and Nabal? So in case you all don't, let us go into this story. So David, King David, after Saul's death, was in the wilderness and uh, he was with his men, a lot of soldiers, and he was hungry. Now nearby, there was a rich man called Nabal. He was known to be mean. And he had a wife, Abigail, who was kind and generous. Now David wanted, David protected Nabal's, uh, Nabal's servants when they went out to uh, collect fruits and from their vineyards. So David asked Nabal that I will send uh, my, I will send my people. Just one second. Yes. So David sent his, his men to Nabal, requesting him for food and uh, something to eat and drink. But what did Nabal? Nabal got angry and he said, I do not have enough. I will not give, uh, give you anything. Do you expect my servants to be hungry? And David was very angry with him. Now imagine someone telling the king this, you know, I cannot give enough after the king did so much for him. So David said, I'm going to take 400 of my men and I'm going to finish this Nabal. Finish, he'll not even have one male child or male uh, animal in his, uh, in his house. Now Abig, a few of the animals, uh, uh, cakes of uh, dry fruits, uh, clothes, and laid them on the donkeys and she rushed towards David as he was storming towards uh, uh, to kill Nabal and all his uh, servants. And she fell, like you can see on the in the photo, fell before him and said, you know, I'm sorry, please uh, forgive Nabal. This is a offering to you. Have mercy on us. And then David also did not, David also felt uh, that he should not kill Nabal and he forgave Nabal. And he went back and he accepted her offering. So this is a story where there was going to be where there was going to be a big fight between David and Nabal. And obviously Nabal would have been defeated and David would have committed murder, right? But who was the peace bringer over here? The one who you see in the photo kneeling down Abigail. beautifully. Yes. Abigail, right? Abigail. Abigail. Yeah. Correct. She was clever and she understood that the heat is rising, the tensions are building and she took the right decision and there was peace. David was filled with peace. Nabal, later he came to know that David was coming to kill him and he just, it's written, he became like a stone. I don't know whether he got a stroke and within a week or 10 days he, he died. 
so david said that you know god uh, took vengeance but anyway there was there was peace and this is something that we can use in our day to day lives so it need not always be an eye for an eye just put yourself in david's situation in the modern world if someone did something wrong against you you know you would want to give him at least something back but imagine there's a third party who comes and calms you down and that third party dear brothers and sisters is the holy spirit who comes and whispers to us to bring peace but sometimes you do not listen so matthew 5:25 reminds well, i go i was reminded of this verse when i read the story of david abigail and nabal come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison now this seems very easy to do right to go to your accuser and say sorry looking at this verse but the dear but my dear brothers and sisters the problem is what do you all think is a problem that comes in why we can't do this ego perfect excellent ego we are so filled with ego and you know what does that fellow think of himself i was thinking you know when david also came to know about this why did he have to go and kill nabal somewhere in his mind he might be thinking i'm the king you know how can this fellow do something okay he's not giving food go to someone else and ask for food uh, but we think you know i have done so much for this sister of mine i helped her when she was didn't have money i sent food i sent um, clothing i sent money everything and when i went and asked her for salt she said why should i give you salt just an example and then we get angry and you know we go and tell uh, speak bad about her or etc etc just one example how we can be peace bringers and not like david in this manner try to go and avenge so peace dear brothers and sisters in hebrew it means shalom the word is shalom now coincidentally i stay in a building which name is shalom uh, but sometimes there's not so much peace over here because during the redevelopment meeting <laughs> all the true colors come out did you all have redevelopment meetings for your buildings was it peaceful anyone here no brother never can it be peaceful you yes. only know people how they are when they when they think come up their ego their pride and all that totally that comes out yeah. i think when we are tested or when we are pushed our true metal is is portrayed everyone is nice everyone is good but when they are pushed when they are under stress when uh, things are urgent or their house comes into question their future their family then they just go all in rage and that's where the peace is gone so anyways the meaning of peace according to ccc also is to be complete or whole okay very simply simple it's a big para but to be complete or whole and throughout the bible i've just mentioned three verses over here we see uh, god we see jesus all speaking about peace philippians 4 uh, 6 to 7 is my favorite uh, verse i'm sure you all know that by heart can anyone say that the first first half of the first one over here this one do not be anxious yeah. about anything you all know that one right but in everything with thanksgiving do not let worry your... about anything but in everything with thanksgiving let your, let your request be made known to the lord yeah and the peace of god that surpasses all understanding and understanding mind and hearts in christ jesus we see the different uh, terms you know given peace of god peace of christ the god of peace there is so much emphasis on peace you know if you see the all the commandments okay the first three commandments are in a vertical between us and god you know the laws to to us god but the next uh, seven commandments are with our neighbor and if you see what is the focus or the fruit of all these commandments of course eternal life of course doing the will of god 
but it is peace if we do not kill if we do not steal if we do not commit adultery or uh, covet our neighbors goods etc we will be so much at peace but today we talk about peace but truly if we at this moment just stop take a deep breath in and think am i really at peace am i complete or whole okay things are good but do i have that deeper peace that is what jesus is talking about that is what is a more deeper sense of the fruit of the holy spirit that we should be truly peaceful and even i've not uh been so successful in completely being at peace because of work because of so many things uh fear anxiety fear of the future i'm sure you all have heard talks on it the things we do not know takes away our peace but truly when god goes before us and god knows where we will be tomorrow and he says that he has a plan for us even though we know that we still have that slight doubt that lack of faith that takes away our peace so let's try to understand a little more another lovely story genesis 33 whose sons are these jacob and esau simple you all can answer from i i and r husband and wife isaac isaac and rebecca and, yes you know it right so jacob and esau are the sons of isaac and rebecca now jacob he is a thin uh, you know smart artist talented man and esau huge hairy hunter and uh, there was a point when esau esau is the guy with the bow comes back home i'm uh, very thirsty and uh, he tells uh, jacob give me something to drink and he was like really i don't know how can someone be so thirsty that <laughs> jacob says now isa was the elder one so he had the birthright everything of his father and the blessing would come on him but jacob says i'll give you something to drink but you give me everything you give me your birthright oath take an oath would any of you all do that i was just thinking imagine you're so thirsty and extremely thirsty you've come to a place and uh, that person tells you maybe your relative sign uh, your house papers then only i'll give you water would you sign <laughs> we might oh, anyway. prefer we might prefer being thirsty brother <laughs> exactly so i i don't know these old testament stories i think i have to meditate more for a deeper meaning but on the first thought i was <laughs> wondering how j uh, uh, isa agreed anyway he agrees he gives his birthright to jacob and later when isaac is going to bless uh, you know before he dies uh, going to bless isa his wife rebecca calls jacob and you all know the story right uh, isaac says prepare a meal for me and uh, come and ble- uh, take blessings from me Rebecca prepares the meal how Isaac likes it takes a furry uh, animal hide and puts it on Jacob because his skin is smooth and Isaac smells Isaac was blind so he has the soup he's ha- he's very happy and he blesses uh, Jacob thinking he is Esau and therefore once the blessing is given it is given he, it can't be taken back so later when Esau comes he's damn angry how can he do this just imagine in today's scenario this is what actually happens you know the parents are old siblings rivalry they forge papers and they take the entire property don't you think it is something like this imagine isaac such a holy person his sons are doing this anyway uh everything god uses for the good of all those who love him so god used this also for the good and later we know that jacob becomes israel so the point of the story is not that the point of this story is that isau is damn pissed with uh, uh jacob imagine your brother has done this to you taken the property and runs away rebecca knew isau is going to come back and finish this uh jacob so he sends she sends jacob away and tells isaac she has to, he, he has to find a wife for himself in another place because these hittite women are very bad so anyway he runs away 
and uh, Isa is all furious and angry. But cutting the story short, as the years pass by, Isao's rage slowly reduces. And then Isaac is uh, ready to, sorry, Jacob is ready to come and meet Isao back. So he sends gifts for him and all. He's damn scared. He knows Isao is coming with 400 men and he's going to meet Isao. Jacob is damn scared. He's praying. He's thinking, oh my God, what is going to happen? But what happens when Isao comes and meets Jacob? He says, why are you gifting all this? I have much more. He forgave Esau. Uh, he forgave Jacob. So the big brother forgave the smaller brother, even though he took all his birthright. Can this happen in today's world? What is going on in all the court cases, uh, in all the courts? You know, I was speaking uh, to one of the priests and he was telling me, Bandra, so many cases are going on. So many cases are going on. Even uh, we see in Goa, all our relatives, when we meet them, so many property cases, property cases, all in the family, people trying to get more. We are going to live, you know, for a few years. Today, I just went for a funeral and I was so sad. I was reminded that, you know, what are we going to take? The readings also say that even father said in his sermon, what are you going to take with you? Why is that pride? Why is that anger, that covetousness, that greed. So let's be like uh, Isao, the bigger brother, uh, bigger by heart. Forgive our brothers and sisters. These are two wonderful stories where we learn about peace. So here we see a beautiful picture and sibling rivalry. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ uh, forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 now, there are some levels of peace that uh, the CCC talks about. 2304. Okay, it's a little heavy, this line. But I want to say peace is not merely the absence of war. Okay, It cannot be attained on earth without safeguarding the goods of persons. Free communication among men. Respect for the dignity of persons and people. And assiduous practice of fraternity. So what is this assiduous? Means really trying hard to build fraternity is a group of like-minded people. So y'all are a group of, y'all are a fraternity, a group of like-minded people in Christ. Peace is tranquility of order. And there cannot be any peace without justice and love. Okay. So we'll go into this. There are levels of peace, dear friends. You know, inner peace, interpersonal. Let's see a little bit on each of these and how tips we can use to improve an all-around peace. So firstly, for someone to be peaceful, we need to be physically fit. We need to be mentally fit. We need to be emotionally at peace. You know, if you're having any uh, relationship problems, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, family, spouse, any kind we, we heard about Esau and Jacob. Do you think Jacob was at peace when he knew his brother was coming? No. So these basic things need to be solved. And finally, spiritual. So when we talk about inner peace, I put my favorite verse here. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. So unforgiveness is one of the main things that we need to have in, that we need to remove from our hearts. We know that if there is any kind of unforgiveness, we cannot be at peace. Anxiety and depression. You know, Jesus, Jesus tackles so much about worry and anxiety. This verse only starts Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. In Matthew 6, there's an entire verse that speaks about do not be worry. And that ends with my favorite verse. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything shall be given unto you. There is no need to be anxious, dear brothers and sisters. Everything is going to be taken care of by a God who is the maker and creator and who is with us each and every moment. So if you all are slightly anxious, let it go away. Believe in God. Be lawful and just. You know, there are so many laws Thousands and thousands of laws that we have in our constitution and more and more are being created by our uh, politicians. But 
all of those are meant for our peace right why are there traffic signs imagine we break the traffic sign what happens there's a traffic jam right in the signals we have to uh, abide by these laws so if we as christians are taking shortcuts and loopholes through the laws you know we cannot expect there to be peace without justice so you have to be lawful and just this is talking about the inner peace okay imagine if you are not lawful if you are not just naachne jasta kare kare samans ha bolna mala kaaki yes you will uh, mute uh, jessica thank you mute thank you being righteous you know righteousness is very important dear brothers and sisters and if we know we are doing something wrong you know there will always be that that thing in our in our conscience okay i didn't pay the taxes okay i if for example i am a physiotherapist you know sometimes if a patient comes to me and says please sign this uh, sick leave paper they are not sick initially i had done this once and in my mind i was very you know how could i do this how could i lie how could i use my authority and post that i made it you know lord i'm not going to do it it took away my peace okay so let's be righteous with small things let there be no uh, spot we have to be perfect like our heavenly father is perfect pay all dues you know don't take money from someone and then they are asking you every time give me my money back give me my money it doesn't work finish finish all loans then you will be more at peace follow the commandments this is a spiritual realm confess all your sins don't keep that guilt don't keep anything go quickly to the confessional very important for this inner peace and okay these are the basic things you know unforgiveness you all know anxiety follow the law follow the commandments this is to some level of peace but if you want a deeper kind of peace that comes from god find your vocation don't just focus on earning money and you know building bungalows find your vocation and do good do charity be generous in giving we will find that great kind of peace so if you try to follow these few tips there is great inner peace interpersonal peace you know charity begins at home i think uh, i had gone recently to a big company and the ceo uh, he said that if a person has good health and good re- re- relations or good family around him he is richer than me he is richer than the richest person so let's have a peaceful family i know it's really difficult but fights in the family can take away all our peace no matter if we are earning well even if imagine you go to a five star resort getting food worth you know 10000 bill but you're getting it for free but if you have a fight with your sibling or your son or your wife or husband you will not be at peace so solve it take away the ego not worth it arguments at office well some of us can just block that out uh, but it does affect you to some extent not only if someone has wronged you but if you have wronged someone try to reconcile very important reconcile we'll speak about it later and the root or the i say the enemy of peace is anger you know like i said in the first story when we are pushed when we are our buttons are pressed we will just explode so anger management is very very important intercommunity peace so firstly <laughs> in our parish you know let's be united before talking about other communities let's not have this goan mangalorean east indian groupism i'm sure the newer generations don't have this but many uh, times i hear the seniors asking father a uh, new priest has come to our parish three new priests that too uh, which uh, are you goan are you mangalorean so father says no i am indian <laughs> they have uh, i think all started using the same answers the priest so let's not uh, go and get into that even a little bit we are all brothers and sisters in christ saint paul says we are a new creation the old is gone there is no jew there is no uh, different uh, castes but we are all children of god locality 
okay i had gone for this uh, very important meeting uh, you all know what was the few sundays ago before faith formation sunday what was the sunday anyone i'll give you a clue it starts with l and it is for all of us i think the 7th 7th of this month le lady lifter sunday yes you all are waiting for me to answer you all can be wrong <laughs> lady sunday so there was a uh, there was a huge deanery meeting during the lady sunday and many of the top uh, you know catholics in very high positions going to the united nation and in the politics and all they came and they said let's stand with our fellow brothers and sisters you know we are always uh, okay manipur things have gone bad we go on the street we share posts we do all kind of things but say our uh, for example was given our muslim brothers their houses were bulldozed you know they are being condemned we don't care so let's treat each other as our own brothers and sisters of, of all castes and creed because not only through that will they see us as christ will they feel the love of christ but also they will unite with us in times of need that i'll tell you all in the next uh, next slide news let's not you know today's news is all opinions you know people are just giving their opinions on whatsapp on facebook on instagram even some of the new cha- news channels are bickered right so sometimes we see the news and we just fixate on that without knowing the background what is happening what is the story sometimes it's really difficult to find what is the truth and we just start criticizing you know for example um, there are so many stampedes happening in india during you know some of the religious uh, religious festivals and processions if we look at it sometimes we hear comments like it should happen to them you know they are doing the wrong thing they deserve it but rather than that we should have com- compassion empathy and pray for them this kind of behavior brings about peace because if we have that divide hindu muslim or any kind of uh, caste we are not going to be able to be peaceful citizens and finally st- stop forwarding these forwards you know the wrong things that even though it's the truth if it is going to create disharmony don't forward it rather tell the person who is forwarding it to stop gossip is a thing that destroys peace so let us be a person stepping in any gossip be it in your parish in your community in your family in your friend circle you know imagine a gossip is being passed and you come out and say uh i think you know this person might have something else because of which he did it he is a nice person let's stand up for people you know especially especially if we know that it is a it's a lie and that will make other people realize and look into their hearts oh you know maybe this different point of view i never thought how did i just say this things about this person so let's bring inter community peace and finally political and global peace we all want you know so many things in india but we do not want to vote so one of the political cat the guy from the politics sector he said that in the 2018 elections guess how much was the percentage of catholics that voted can anyone guess a per- percentage this is in uh, mumbai he was saying how much do you all think uh, above 50 or below 50 chalo someone answer that means more than 50% of catholics voted or less than 50% less than 50% brother you're right you're right so he said only 16 to 17% of catholics had voted that year which was very low and i don't know how and you all know the result but this year all of them went about and they in, you know did lot of uh, what do you say uh, rallies getting catholics to vote putting stalls helping people find their voter id and place whatever and this time believe it or not we all clapped when we heard it 
the average of uh, maharashtra's vote was 52% but catholics were around 67% or 65 something like that praise god and that is how many of the seats came to the desired members what the church was saying to vote for so it was really great and they told us further on there's going to be bmc elections happening there's going to be uh, other rajya sabha different elections happening vote each and every person vote find out who's the right person and as a parish if 5000 people say in one parish vote you all are going to make a difference we think we are minority minority but no we are not we are not smart and united so that's what all these members were telling us the coordinators of various cells and associations to go and spread it and that's why i'm telling you all this so please vote okay let's participate in peace rallies and programs they were saying that catholics are a political we are nice to say god we don't want to get into politics she politics but believe it or not we are all part of politics what we do is going to affect us and what we don't do is going to affect us you know in kerala uh, i have many friends i studied in mangalore in father mula medical college and many malayalis were there and they told me that many of their family members are in congress or in various uh, different uh, political parties and they have like a good majority over there and because of that you know they are able to do many things in the church that would otherwise have a lot of hindrance over here we do not have much representative catholic re- representative in uh, politics and so it's very difficult to get things done which is why we are tempted to get into corruption so let's educate our children about politics and maybe try to encourage them to join to the right source by god's grace who knows you know they will be able to bring about a change so let's keep in mind to be politically and globally okay do you all know which is this photo over here this photo can you all see it it's a it's a man hammering a sword that is bent who knows what is this it's a verse from the bible anyone let us beat up swords into plowshares that's the verse this is a statue at new york at the united nations office building so this is isaiah 24 where I, isaiah says when the new uh, israel is going to come nations will not rise against nations people will take their swords and make them plows people will take their tridents and make them pitchforks so this is what view of peace isaiah is giving us once the new israel comes let's try to build this now and finally peace on earth let's use water less recycle waste reduce plastic service our vehicles and machines acs whatever it is and take care of our poor animals and birds my wife keeps feeding the birds you know the sparrows so sweet and i think even jessica was saying last time she feeds the birds really good please do these things praise yeah. god it feed doggies also wow praise god we need to take care right because this is also a dimension of peace they are given under our authority god has given them to us so jesus dear friends is the prince of peace not only because he is giving us peace but the ccc says because he has killed the hostility okay if you read the third line jesus killed the hostility what is this hostility you know there's a lot of hostility in the world you see nowadays people are angry you know abusing in a hurry don't care about others stone hearted this hostility is all come from the sin of adam and eve you know and we we know that god was angry because if you see when adam and eve can you see the small picture when adam and eve was thrown out what who did god put to protect the garden of eden michael it's written an angel with a f- angel flaming sword or a sword of fire i don't know if it is michael hmm. but uh, that was how serious god was right so that shows that 
God was quite just. He's a just God. So he there was anger. Jesus came and killed all that hostility. He reconciled men with God and made the church, his church, the sacrament of unity of God and the human race. So that is why Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, not just because he gives us peace. He died on the cross for that. Praise God. And through Jesus' example, I've just given three things, okay, what Jesus did. How can we follow Jesus and bring peace in the world? Jesus healed the sick uncountable times, raised the dead to life. We just read in the Bible, we don't know how many more. John says that if we keep on writing the works of Jesus, there would not be enough books. So, we just have seen a trailer of Jesus through the Bible. Anyways, how can we, you know, be there in a time of need and offer a word of encouragement? Recently, my grandmother had passed away and, you know, just a few close friends who had come and just spent time with me, not giving advice, not speaking much. It meant so much, dear brothers and sisters. And even in my workplace, you know, being a senior, I've seen sometimes my juniors so stressed out and they are hyperventilating or panicking and just giving them the right words because we have gone through it. And they, they, you can just see that that heavy burden just gets off. You know, like when we are stressed, there's a big stone on our heads. You know, you've lost something. You've made a big mistake. There's a, you've lost money, a wrong share. You've lost your mobile. You've lost your gold ring, wedding ring. <laughs> Sometimes when I lose it, my wife is all, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> but I find it by thanks to St. Anthony. So you need to be there to just give a word of encouragement and there will be tremendous peace in that person. So let's heal the sick through our words, the sick of stress and anxiety. Second, casting out demons. How many of us can cast out demons? This is the photo of the demoniac that had the legion inside him. And Jesus cast him out into the pigs that jumped off. How can we cast out demons? We can cast out the demons of lies, gossip and false beliefs. Even false beliefs, you know. So many superstitions. So many things that people think, okay, I'll, you know, I'll keep the broom this way. Don't cut the nails in the night. Things like simple things, you know, that may cause a lot of stress and fight in the family. Maybe we can we can tell them the right, the truth. See, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Right? The truth is going to set us free and give us peace. And what is the whole truth? You know, the answer to all our anxieties, no matter how much we fail, we fail miserably in life. Jesus, if we believe in him, we are going to have eternal life forever and ever. So there's actually nothing to worry. We worry about temporary things in this world. So if you can give this truth to others, you can set them free. You can cast out the demons of anger and frustration, anxiety, stress, depression, lies by the truth of Jesus Christ. And finally, reconciling. This is a... You all know which photo this is? Who is this? Prodigal son. Correct. Perfect. So the prodigal son, again, Jesus, you know, encouraging us to reconcile with our family members. Actually, the previous pick also, what did Jesus tell the demoniac once he was uh, back to normal? The demoniac said, I want to follow you. What did Jesus tell him? Go to your hometown. And yes. preach them. Yeah, and meet your family. Go to your family. So when in one of the sermons, or I don't know where I, I, a priest was saying that Jesus is focusing on human family unity, human family unity. He wanted the demoniac who was separated from his family to become whole again. What I said was peace, being wholesome, being whole. So that once that peace was there in his family. You know, Jesus wanted that more than him following him at that time. So reconciling, 
you know let's patch patch up an argument so many times i see fathers children are angry with fathers or mothers are angry with daughters daughter in law father in law husbands and wife it's not easy you tell the person go and patch up you think they're going to patch up no but pray for them take time little by little you know touch their hearts tell them ways encourage them they feel there is no hope anymore that person is never going to change but god knows there is hope there is a way saint monica prayed for her son who was beyond all hope parting 30 years 30 years yeah. y'all know who that is right saint augustine Doc- yes doctor of saint the church augustine. yeah doctor of the church correct so we can do it you know it's not impossible it looks like a mountain but jesus says have faith as a mustard seed and you can move mountains and uh, just a few things about holy mass so i found this very interesting you know when we say the our father forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us mm. you know the bible says that if you have an offering at the altar but you remember you have done something you have sinned against your brother or vice versa leave that offering and go and get reconciled so this is what i was saying about reconcile now when we say the our father and we say forgive those who trespass against us technically if it is there you can you can literally go out of mass right will did any of you all do that during mass you think oh no, no. i called my auntie a fool let me go and reconcile with her you leave mass go go home call her no. sorry auntie i call you a fool come back and join offertory <laughs> doesn't happen right so the church gives us a moment where we can say peace be with you so it is also a way not only to just smile and see which uncle is come which girl is there behind what is she wearing how many people are come for mass but actually it is meant to look at our brother and sister and spend a moment and you know say peace be with you or i forgive you or just smile husband and wife or family sitting together that is why we have to sit together during mass if you are coming for different masses you are giving other husbands and wives peace not your own <laughs> so you need to do very that very true very true yeah and even even uh, during the i confess right we say and uh, i confess and we pray to almighty god for my brothers and sisters too we ask them to pray for us also you know like earlier times people used to say their sins loudly now we can't do that or people will be scandalized during mass we'll have to do this close our ears so these are ways where we can reconcile during mass in what a small may pa- small way possible you know sometimes when you fight with your spouse we can't even look at them and smile this is just an example or you fight with someone you can't even look at them but imagine during the peace you look and you smile that is the first step of reconciliation right can't just go and hug and kiss <laughs> but saying kiss in the earlier times so this is just a gk thing for you uh, no need to read this but they used to give peace by kissing each other literally it was called a kiss of peace so because it was unsanitary <laughs> or maybe some things happened i don't know <laughs> in the 13th century the franciscans bought this thing called the pax pax means peace and uh, tabula uh, pacis means the tablet of peace this word osculatorium means it will be oscillate it will be moved around so they used to kiss that and they used to pass it wipe it with a linen cloth and kiss it there were different shapes it could be the crucified uh, christ it could be a cross it could be mother mary so something interesting you know this was how peace was given so interesting to know it's not practiced Brother, in now the, in the gulf and on the peace they touched their hand together passing it on till they were in the lebanese mass oh i didn't they know that peace. yeah from the altar the altar children come and pass the peace with their joint hands to everyone this wow. we experienced in the gulf in abu dhabi yeah. yeah. i i i think you know the the time for peace now should be increased during mass because sometimes peace be with you immediately the choir members say lamb of god are i barely looked one side <laughs> so we should give time to i i like it abroad to shake hands 
they hug sometimes yo you yes. look sometimes people don't even look properly they just like give a cold piece <laughs> but uh, some some person who's really suffering and sad when you give them a warm smile and peace literally you can you know give the peace of christ to them and it may touch their hearts like similarly during the funeral when people hug me when my grandmother passed away that gave me quite a lot of consolation it it works when you are hurt so we end with this jesus gives us his peace during mass you know we sometimes take this for granted that the priest is giving us but it is in persona christi and jesus tells us i repeat in john 14 27 peace i leave you my peace i give you not as the world gives do i give you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid let us remember and by heart this verse whenever we are buried because god's peace is not a peace of human that any human can give you because his peace is an eternal peace a peace a promise a pact that no matter what happens we can fail miserably we can do the worst crimes possible but if we if we confess if we come before god you know he will forgive us so let's let's remember this because jesus came in the same way to the apostles who were in the closed room scared and gave them his peace and he gives it to us during the mass and at this moment we are sons and daughters of god that's how the beatitude ends blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of god of sons god. and daughters of god so let us let us take this moment to reflect on what we've heard today and i encourage you all to be the person to go front and you know be a scout there are talent scouts who come to search for cricketers let's be an opportunity opportunist to search for okay this is a moment i can bring the peace of christ i sometimes search you know there are opportunities that come okay this is a test you know i can i can go and bring this person closer to god or tell this person a good deed or encourage this person let's be hungry for that charity you know opportunities don't come always just as jobs nowadays <laughs> so let's take take the chance with faith be prepared be in prayer always ask the holy spirit for his peace and as sons and daughters brothers and sisters let's make this world like how isaiah said it the lion will play with the sheep the baby will put his hand in the where the snake hole it's not literal but that means there will be no hostility let's make peace come in the world we sign ourselves in the name of the father son the holy spirit amen let's wish wish each other peace of christ peace of christ peace of christ brother peace of christ, peace of christ. Peace of christ everyone peace of christ peace brothers and sisters peace of christ brothers and sisters peace of christ everyone peace of christ brother anthony peace of christ to you dear praise god praise god